Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Since the 2021 KHL season began back in early September, it seems as if there's been a different team reporting positive cases for the current global virus every week. With its ability to spread quickly, and with an effective vaccine still not widely available yet, it was expected that if the league was to resume play, each team was bound to record positive results at some point, whether they somehow catch it on the ice from their opponents, or as they go about their day-to-day -day lives away from the ring. Sure, the cases themselves may be largely asymptomatic or mild in nature, but it's still worth knowing when a team gets hit with an outbreak, especially if several roster players are out of the lineup or a game is postponed because of it. Given the frequency in which we have seen this news over the last few months, I began to ask myself, exactly how many people have tested positive for the virus in the KHL? Well, after a ton of research, plenty of news articles, and many uses of Google Translate, I think I might have found the answer, folks. So in today's video, allow me to take you through the KHL's Corona Timeline. Let us begin at the end of the previous season on March 25th, 2020, when the KHL released a statement announcing that the remainder of the 2020 Gagarin Cup playoffs had been cancelled over concerns regarding the global pandemic. This news came after two of the teams still in the competition, Finnish side Jokerit and Kazakhstan side Baris Astana, had each followed their respective country's government guidelines and voluntarily removed themselves from the rest of the tournament a few days prior. Given that the KHL was set to begin its second round in the coming days, and considering that two of the final eight teams had suddenly just pulled out, the league was kind of backed into a corner and were forced to make the tough choice although the health and safety of their players was obviously an important factor in the decision. After this announcement, the KHL entered its 2020 off-season and talk of the virus went quiet for several months, as the players returned to their respective families and each team's focus shifted to building a competitive roster for the upcoming 2021 season. The next we would hear from the KHL regarding the virus came almost four months later, when the first positive cases were revealed by the league. On July 13th, KHL president Alexei Morozov confirmed that at that point, six players had tested positive from three of their Russian teams, two from Sevastal Sheropovets, one from Spartak Moscow, and three from Torpedo. A few days after this news on July 15th, the league announced that China-based franchise Kunlun Red Star would be moving their home arena from Beijing to Maitishi, Russia for the entire 2021 season in order to minimise any potential disruptions or travel restrictions given that the Asian country was the origin and now the epicentre of the virus. As the month rolled on, the latter half of July would see the first major outbreaks within the league as several teams brought their players together for their respective pre-season training camps. On July 19th, Spartak Moscow had reportedly postponed the beginning of their camp as, quote, several people linked to the team had tested positive. Just two days later on July 21st, CSKA Moscow reported seven positive cases of their own, while Avangard Omsk revealed that up to 20 players and staff had tested positive, causing major issues to the beginning of their training camp too. Things would calm down for the next few weeks as the infected players recovered in quarantine and teams prepared for the various upcoming preseason fixtures and tournaments. That is, until August 19th, when Avto mobilist Yekaterinburg announced that up to a third of their roster had tested positive for the virus, including the team's new head coach and recently disgraced bench boss Bill Peters. If that wasn't bad enough, on the same day it was reported that several other Russian teams had recently recorded positive results, with Amur Habarovsk reporting two cases and Sabir Novosibirsk reporting 11 cases. These numbers culminated in the cancellation of the Governor's Cup tournament set to take place the following day on August 20th, as both Avto and Sabir were set to take part, and the league didn't want the two infected teams to spread the virus to the other three contestants. Unfortunately though, this cancellation didn't prevent those other teams from having outbreaks of their own, as on August 24th, Tractor Chelyabinsk reported that six players and staff members had tested positive for the virus just nine days before the KHL season was scheduled to begin. As the preseason quickly came to an end and with the regular season less than a week away, KHL president Alexei Morozov gave an update to fans on the number of cases the league had faced over the last six weeks. On August 30th, Morozov revealed that 116 KHL players had tested positive for the virus up until that point, 
with 54 of them having already recovered, and each of the cases being mild or asymptomatic in nature. Now this total doesn't entirely add up with the number of cases we have discussed so far in this timeline, so I would imagine that there were several teams who had dealt with their own respective outbreaks, but they only disclosed it to the league, or it was reported by a more obscure news outlet, and I couldn't find a record of it online. Regardless, if these are the numbers that the KHL president is reporting, then we'll roll with them moving forward, shall we folks? Now if you thought that the league had already seen the worst of the virus, and would face little trouble from it moving forwards, Oh boy, would you be mistaken. Three days after Morozov's announcement, the wait was finally over. The puck was dropped on September 2nd, and the 2021 KHL season got underway. While most teams around the league were at relatively full health and showed minimal signs of the virus on their roster, one organization was dealing with a completely different set of issues. Remember when I mentioned that Kunlun Red Star had moved to Russia for the year in order to distance themselves from the epicenter of the virus and avoid any potential issues with travel restrictions? Well, due to the unique circumstances of their arrangement and the added hoops that the team needed to jump through, all non-Russian players and staff were subject to a different set of migration rules compared to the other imports across the league. This meant that Kunlun had to start their season without most, if not all, of their foreign players, instead having to ice large numbers of minor league or junior players just to fill the roster for the first few weeks of the season. Given that Kunlun aren't exactly a league powerhouse at the best of times, the team struggled mightily out of the gate, as they won two of their first 15 games of the season, one of which was via forfeit before reinforcements arrived. I guess positive results were the least of their worries, eh folks? Now, if you watched my Yokerit videos a few months ago, you will already know about the next event on this timeline, but if you either didn't watch those videos or have since forgotten what happened, allow me to refresh your memory. A week after the season had begun on September 10th, Russian side Nefta Himik revealed that seven of their players had tested positive for the virus upon their arrival in Latvia to take on Dinamo Riga. Having played against Jokerit the evening prior on September 9th, the Finnish side had recently come into contact with the infected team, and though Jokerit hadn't recorded any positive test results of their own, they were still seen as potentially compromised. This prompted the Finnish government to place the entire team under quarantine for two weeks, which caused Jokerit to suspend the next half a dozen games of their schedule, and caused them to play catch up in the standings once they returned. Unfortunately, things would only continue to get worse for the league over mid to late September, as a number of teams would be hit hard by the virus in a short span of time. Less than a week after Jokerit's quarantine on September 16th, Amur Haborovsk announced that their interim head coach Pavel Torgayev had tested positive and was self-isolating in quarantine. So does that mean Amur was playing under the interim of the interim? Anyways, this news was then followed the next day on September 17th, when Kazakhstan side Baris Astana confirmed that 12 players and staff had also tested positive, leading them to be placed under quarantine for two weeks and postponed their next six games of the season per Kazakhstan government guidelines. Less than 24 hours later on September 18th, Russian side Lokomotiv Yaroslav reported that 11 players and one staff member had been suffering from symptoms of the virus, but each of them tested negative after the team had returned home from their recent road trip. Despite these results, nine players continued to exhibit symptoms, which led the team to conduct further tests and confirm that three players had tested positive. Oh, but we're not done there, folks. Also on September 20th, Salavat Yuleyev confirmed that they too had three positive test results among their team. And if that wasn't enough on one day for you, Russian side Torpedo and Latvian side Dinamo Riga both revealed that they had several positive results as well, with Torpedo claiming four cases and Riga claiming five the day prior on September 19th. Then, on September 23rd, one team who had previously been clear of the virus up until that point experienced one of, if not the worst, outbreak since the season began. Just before their game against Sibir Novosibirsk, Russian side SKA St. Petersburg announced that more than half of their roster had tested positive for the virus. With neither the team nor the KHL interested in postponing their upcoming games, SKA were forced to call up 10 junior players from their MHL affiliate, with one player being as young as 16 years old. 
Things were so bad that in the aforementioned game against Sabir, St. Petersburg broke the KHL record for the youngest roster to ever suit up in a regular season game, as their team held an average age of just 21 years old. 21 years old! One of the top teams in the league who is able to attract some of the best talent both in the league and formerly of the NHL, iced a roster filled with players 21 years old or younger. As you might expect, St. Petersburg lost the game 4-1 and helped Sabir take their first road win against SKA in seven years. At least the virus has made this season an entertaining one, eh folks? Oh, and before the month was over, Dinamo Riga's five confirmed cases on September 19th became ten cases by September 24th, so the team were placed under a two-week quarantine per Latvia's government guidelines. We're certainly through the worst of it now, folks, but we're not quite done yet as the month of October also had several instances of its own. On October 5th, Belarusian side Dinamo Minsk reported that they had five positive test results of their own, so in an attempt to keep everyone safe and their season on track, they isolated those who were infected but didn't cancel any games. Things then seemed to die down a little until October 19th, when Dinamo Riga once again reported 13 new cases and had to go back into quarantine once again. Gah, between the number of cases and their performance on the ice, this season sure has been a tough one for the Latvians, folks. The final registered cases as of right now took place on October 23rd, when Finnish side Jokerit announced that they had four positive results, a number which would rise to 12 almost a week later on October 29th. However, the team stated that they would not be going into a blanket quarantine. Instead, they left the infected players at home to isolate, while the rest of the team continued their schedule in the hopes of making up the games they had missed due to their two-week quarantine in early September. Now, as far as my research is aware, this is where the timeline ends at the time of this recording on November 14th. Based on the cases that I've been able to gather from various news outlets around the league, and combining them with the numbers revealed by league president Alexei Morozov on August 30th, it appears that the KHL has seen approximately 196 confirmed cases since July 13th, 2020. Of these 196 cases, 116 of them came during the off-season, with approximately 80 cases having taken place since the 2021 season began on September 2nd. 80 different cases in approximately 73 days. That's roughly 8 cases a week. Now I've just realised as I'm editing this video the next day that the KHL conducted another interview with Morozov on October 23rd, in which he states that 75 people were currently infected across the league, and that 322 players and staff had recovered from the virus up until then. Meaning that instead of there being the 196 cases that I thought there were, there's actually been closer to 400 total cases. That said, I've been unable to find any articles detailing the large majority of these numbers, so they must have solely been reported to the KHL or covered in publications that I haven't had access to here in the UK. I may not have got the numbers right folks, but at least this video still provides a pretty comprehensive timeline of a lot of the outbreaks the league has faced this season. Interestingly though, according to my research, there are half a dozen KHL teams that haven't publicly recorded a single positive case for the virus, those teams being HC Sochi, Vityaz Podolsk, Dinamo Moscow, Akbars Kazan, Metalurg Magnitogorsk and Kunlun Red Star. Many if not all of these teams have seen their respective schedules heavily disrupted due to the sheer number of games that have been postponed and subsequently rescheduled in order to accommodate their opponents not being available, thus creating a more tightly packed schedule later down the line and giving teams who have not recorded a single positive result less time to rest between games. That said, several teams on this list have received forfeit wins thanks to their opponents being unable to ice a roster and the two teams being unable to find a suitable date to reschedule, so it isn't all bad for them folks. It's also worth pointing out that due to the virus infecting several players on the same roster all at once and forcing each of them to sit out for extended periods of time, many young players and prospects have been given the chance to play in the league this year which they likely wouldn't have received under normal circumstances. In fact, as of November 3rd, the KHL had seen 91 players under the age of 20 take to the ice in the league just this season alone. 91! 
Not only has this completely smashed the previous record that was set over an entire year, but we're not even halfway through the current season yet. Could you imagine if a few teams get hit with the virus again in the coming months? We could end up seeing well over 200 teenage players suiting up in a KHL jersey by the new year, and maybe even closer to 250 by the time the season is actually over. Despite the difficulties the league has faced in recent months, as it stands right now on November 14th, things seem to be looking up for the KHL. Most if not every team has their full roster playing now, there are minimal cases of the virus present in the player base, and the rapid contingency plans that have been put in place as to not compromise a team's health or disrupt their regular season schedules seem to be working pretty well. That said, the winter months are closing in and the virus remains as easy to transmit as ever, so we could see things get worse before they eventually get better. But regardless, here's hoping both the KHL and the rest of the world has already seen the worst of this virus, the recent vaccines live up to their long-awaited hype, and the league can finish its 2021 season without any more major outbreaks. If not, the next few months are certainly going to be interesting, that's for sure. And that was a look at the KHL's Corona Timeline. What do you guys think about the number of cases the KHL has faced this season or the handling of the virus? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Jordan Whitehead, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, Tom from Finland, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.